Our first reading comes from Paul's letter uh, to the, the first letter to the Corinthians, chapter 10, starting at the first verse. And he writes, For I do not want you to be ignorant of the fact, brothers and sisters, that our ancestors were all under the cloud and that they all passed through the sea. They were all baptized into Moses in the cloud and in the sea. And they all ate the same spiritual food and drank the same spiritual drink. Uh, for they drank from the spiritual rock that accompanied them. And that rock was Christ. Nevertheless, God was not pleased with most of them. Their bodies were scattered in the wilderness. Now, these things occurred as examples to keep them, keep us from setting our hearts on evil things as they did. Do not be idolaters as some of them were. As it is written, the people sat down to eat and drink and got up to indulge in revelry. We should not commit sexual immorality as some of them did. And in one day, 23,000 of them died. We should not test Christ as some of them did and were killed by snakes. And do not grumble as some of them did and were killed by the destroying angel. These things happened to them as examples and were written down as warnings for us on whom the culmination of the ages has come. So if you think you're standing firm, be careful that you don't fall. No temptation has overcome you except what is common to mankind. And God is faithful. He will not let you be tempted beyond what you can bear. But when you are tempted, he will also provide a way out so that you can endure it. Amen. A reading from Luke chapter 13, verses 1 through to verse 9. Now there were some present at that time who told Jesus about the Galileans, whose blood Pilate had mixed with their sacrifices. Jesus answered, Do you think that these Galileans were worse sinners than all the other Galileans because they suffered this way? I tell you no, but unless you repent, you too will all perish. Or those 18 who died when the tower in Siloam fell on them. Do you think that they were more guilty than all the others living in Jerusalem? I tell you no, but unless you repent, you too will all perish. Then he told them this parable. A man had a fig tree growing in his vineyard, and he went to look for fruit on it, but did not find any. So... He said to the man who took care of the vineyard, for three years now, I've been coming to look for fruit on this fig tree and haven't found any. Cut it down. Why should it use up the soil? Sir, the man replied, leave it alone for one more year and I'll dig around it and fertilize it. If it bears fruit next year, fine. If not, then cut it down. Amen. Let us pray. Lord God, speak to us now and stir our hearts to grow closer to you and to one another. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 So, the first reading that we read this morning spoke about those who followed Jesus, uh, who followed Moses and ate the same spiritual food and drank the same spiritual drink. But what is this drink? This is the same thing Jesus spoke about when he referred to living water. He often spoke about living water and offered this to those he met. This living water he spoke about is his offer of eternal life. Sometimes the only time people will seek and accept his offer is when they are having problems or going through difficult times. But it's far better if we recognize our need for God in our lives. We need to become seriously thirsty for God in our lives. 
The problem can occur though, that when we are seriously thirsty, we are not bothered about the choice of drink. We are simply desperate for water. In extreme thirst, the body screams for water. At nomadic desert people of Jesus' day would be well used to the power of such thirst. Now when some of you came in, I gave you a cup of water and I'd like you to drink it, but just before you drink it, I want to ask you a question. What does it feel like to be really thirsty? And I'm actually asking for a response. So, Norman, what does it feel like to be really thirsty? Yeah. I remember uh, running up a mountain in New Zealand. And we were getting near to the top. And you drain, you're completely exhausted, and there's nothing left of you. And you just need some refreshing drink. Okay. Really good. So, in case those people who are watching this on, online didn't hear Norman, he said he went to, to New Zealand, went up to a high mountain, um, got to the top, was totally exhausted, and just needed a refreshing drink. So I'm going to ask you to drink, you don't have to drink all the water, but at least drink some of the water. And then I'm going to ask you another question. What difference does having a drink make when you are thirsty? So, Phyllis was saying that it soothes your mouth, it stops you feeling so dry. Um, it's a relief. Yeah. So, sometimes when we're really, really thirsty, our throat and mouth can feel almost as if the sand in our mouth. We are so desperate for water. But once we've had a drink, that feeling goes, and we're, we're satisfied. Now, the image of spiritual water is a very strong one, just as water that we drink is a very strong one. Spiritual water is an even stronger image. Drawing on our life and death, human need for water. This is both physical and spiritual. Jesus invites us to drink from the spiritual or the living water that he offers. This, is not, this invitation is not confined to the material or spiritually rich only. It is freely available to everyone. Those who are already in a relationship with Jesus and those who have not yet accepted him. God says in the Bible, I am like a drink of water to you when you're really thirsty. I can quench your thirst, make you feel better, keep you alive. Refresh you and comfort you. Drinking water from a tap or a bottle or whatever can also quench us. We can, it can quench our thirst. It can make us feel better. Without water, we would die. Without God's spiritual water, we will die. What we need to do is to take what God offers us. We need to say, thank you Lord, I'll accept what you are offering 
and drink deeply from you. Sometimes when we are really thirsty, we're not too fussy about the source of the water. I handed out four cups of water. I didn't tell anybody what they were. I know there was a lot of joking about was the gin in it or vodka, and maybe I got one or two um, sad faces when I said no. It was just water. But some of it was fizzy. Some was flavoured. Some was plain water. And just like we don't all, when we're really, really thirsty, we don't eat, always get that fussy about where we're going to get our water from. Some water isn't clean and it can make us very ill. With, with, real, with water, we need to make sure we can trust it. And it's the same with spiritual water too. Suppose you are thirsty to understand who you are, why we are alive, why there is so much evil and suffering, and why things go wrong. There are lots of people offering us easy answers or giving us things to take our minds off this deep thirst. Some of these things, like materialism, drugs, alcohol abuse, gossiping, and all sorts of things like that are bad for us. Instead of wasting our time and money on poor value substitutes, we might as well go for the real thing. And no, I'm not talking about Coca-Cola. <laughs> the real thing is God himself. The only way to be completely and safely satisfied, physically, mentally, and spiritually, as the whole wonderful human being we are, is by drinking in God's spirit. We all have a God-shaped hole in our lives, and only he can fill it. So don't be distracted. God is pure, faithful, true, and full of love. The best drink there is. In the Gospel according to John, Jesus said, um, he said, I am the way, I am the truth. Nobody comes to the Father except through me. Just note that nobody comes to the Father except through me. We can't turn around to God and say, well, I've been a good person. I've not really done that much bad in my life. I've never killed anyone. I've never seriously robbed anybody. I've never intentionally hurt anyone. And, and anyway, my parents went to church. My grandparents went to church. And mm, sometimes I go to church as well. But you know, I wish the preacher wouldn't go on so long because really, I need to get home. I've got roast in the oven. I don't want it to, to burn. But you know, I know we've got to go through all that rigmarole, the prayers, the readings, the sermon. You know, but it's just nice to sing songs. But you know, I'm still quite a good person. I'll go to heaven one day. Well, let me tell you something. Jesus was very, very clear. Very clear. He said, we have to repent. And repentance is not just saying sorry like we did earlier on. Repentance is, yes, saying sorry, meaning it, and turning around and not doing what we did, what we've already asked God to forgive.
forgive us for, not repeating that, not doing it again. If it was just about saying sorry, it would be great. But it's not. We have to turn away from the things we did. So, if people like gossiping, and you hear somebody starting to gossip, <coughs> stay away from them. Don't go near them. Because otherwise you're going to be dragged in. And you're going to find that you're going to be listening, and you're going to think, ooh, that's a nice bit of juicy news. Who can I tell now? That's not repentance. An alcoholic, if they're trying to stop drinking, they're not going to go into a pub or go into an off-license. They're going to stay away from it. That's what we have to do. We have to stay away from the things that we know are likely to drag us into sin. If we do that, and we ask Jesus to forgive us, the good news is, he will. But there's a serious side as well that we have to address. God is no fool. He is wise to all our excuses and to our rejection of his offer. For all kinds of reasons, we continue invest, to invest in values and lifestyles and spending and habits which sell us short and bankrupt us spiritually. Sometimes we even half convince ourselves that God doesn't notice, or even doesn't mind, that his understanding of why we do the things we do is so tolerant and accepting that he can mostly, that we can mostly live as we like, especially if we are being true to ourselves, that it doesn't matter what we do or how we behave. In the Gospel reading today about the fig tree, Jesus is at pains to point out the dangers of living and thinking this way. Of course it matters. Of course God knows exactly what we are doing and how we are living. And if we go on and on, Refusing to accept him on his terms, the truth must be faced that his invitation can be withdrawn. If we haven't got Jesus in our lives, if we are not putting Jesus first in our life, if we are not coming to Jesus the way the truth and the life, then we will perish. Jesus doesn't sugarcoat this pill. He tells it straight. And I felt that God has been telling me to tell it straight. And Lent is an excellent time to look carefully at what our real response to him is and act on what we see. If you know you are not in a right relationship with God at the moment, <coughs> don't waste any more time. Get yourself right now. Drink from his living spiritual water. It's your choice how you want to respond to his invitation. If you know you need to drink from him and get your life onto the right track, then I would invite you to respond to God by repeating the prayer that I'm going to pray shortly. This prayer is not just for those who have never accepted but it's a good discipline for all of us to renew our commitment to him. 
So let us pray. After each sentence that I say, would you please repeat it, if you are willing and want to know God's love and guidance in your life. Dear God, I need you. I am calling out to you. I'm calling out to you. I'm tired of doing things my way. I'm tired of doing things my way. Help me to start doing things your way. Help me to start doing things your way. I know I have not always done what is right. I know that I have not always done what is right. Please forgive me. Please forgive me. I invite you into my life to be my Lord and Saviour. I invite you into my life to be my Lord and Saviour. Fill the emptiness in me with your Holy Spirit and make me whole. Fill your emptiness in me with your Holy Spirit and make me whole. Lord, help me to trust you. Lord, help me to trust you. Help me to love you. Help me to love you. Help me to live for you. Help me to live for you. Help me to understand your grace, your mercy, and your peace. Help me to understand your grace, your mercy, and your peace. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Amen.